Okay. Go. So I'm Amanda Blomo, like she said. Um, I've been a part of KWN for, gosh, since I was about 18 years old. Um, I have served on just about every committee um, in this organization that has served on the board in just about every position. Um, so this is one of my favorite organizations to be a part of. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk. When I had asked to present at some point this year, I know that it wasn't an exciting topic to talk about because insurance is not fun. I know, I know it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> My other insurance uh, guru over there. Um, but I do believe that it is something that we all do need to know. Before I got into insurance, I knew nothing about it. I didn't know the difference between a deductible and a premium. And statistically, 94% of women handle the finances in their household. So I think it is very important for you to understand how you're protecting your assets. Um, so that's why I wanted to present today um, on my top 10 favorite ways to improve your insurance policy. Um, before I go into that, I'll just talk a little bit again about how I got into the industry. So I joined David Insurance eight years ago. Um, actually, yesterday was my anniversary. Thank you. Um, and we merged with Visons um, January of 2021, so we're going on two years. Um, we also make up Sparks and Valeri Agency in the Kenosha area. So David, Valeri, Sparks, we are all one. So I am the team lead for the Racine region for the Racine and Kenosha locations. Visons makes up about 14 locations in the state of Wisconsin. So enough about background on me and the company. I'll start with my top 10 favorite ways to improve your insurance policy. It's a mix of coverages and um, discounts. Some I will go in a little bit more detail and some I'll just gloss over and you can talk to your insurance agent about um, if interested. So I'm gonna write down this number and I wanna know if you guys know what this means. I hope you guys can all see it. 25, 50, 10. 25,000, um, so that would be like for an auto policy. That would be yep, the state minimums. Yep. State minimums for an auto policy. 25,000 is the maximum any one person can recover, and 50,000 is the maximum that you're covered for with that crappy policy. Yes, and what's the 10 for? <laughs> um, property damage. Property damage. That is the state minimum for Wisconsin. This is junk, okay? Don't get this. If you <laughs> go back to your policy and double check what your liability limits are. So it's really sad that this is our state minimum, but the average cost of a car right now, the average cost is $50,000. You total a vehicle, you owe $40,000 because your insurance coverage is only gonna cover 10,000 of it, okay? So our agency, we um, the minimum we will write is 300,000 combined single limits, um, which then leads me into my second way to improve your insurance policy is an umbrella. That gives you an excess liability of $1 million over your home, your auto, your rec vehicles, all of your assets. Um, usually it's about $150 a year for a million dollars of excess liability. So again, highly recommend improving your liability limits and adding an umbrella, okay? Any questions on that? I know I just kind of rushed over high level stuff, <laughs> okay, all right. Um, three, a lot of us women, we have home businesses. So um, talk to your insurance agent on if you have automatic coverage for your business personal property. Um, this could be small in-home daycare, um, hair salon, um, you have an MLS business, um, arts and crafts, things like that. Um, sometimes there are some automatic coverage on your policy. Um, sometimes you have to add additional coverage for liability or more business personal property. So just make sure, again, a lot of us women, we tend to have some extra business inside the home. So that's another way to improve your insurance policy. So as all prices are going up um, in every industry, I also recommend when I'm reviewing insurance policies is increasing your rental reimbursement coverage. So a lot of standard policies give $30 a day, which is fine, um, but it's harder and harder to find a vehicle that you will get for $30 a day um, or even available. Um, 
Also consider if you have a minivan, $30 a day, you are not gonna get a minivan. So if you want what you have similar of, if you are in uh, an accident, I encourage looking at that and increasing that. More and more insurance companies are going to um, minimum of $40 a day, just because again, they know $30 a day is just not enough. So that's another way to improve your insurance policy. The next coverage, I really like this coverage. It's been around for, I would say, about four or five years now, um, but a lot of clients still may not have this coverage. It's called underground service line coverage. I did a YouTube video on it a couple years ago. Um, it's very minimal. Some policies, it's $15 a year um, for 15,000 in coverage. It can vary on um, the limit. It could vary on the age of your home as far as what the price is. But essentially what underground service line coverage is, is that it gives that coverage for those pipes and wires that are underneath the home that aren't generally covered on a typical homeowner's policy. If you live in a um, neighborhood with mature trees and things like that, you might have you know, more damage uh, to those pipes and wires. So again, something to, to look at. I recommend it on all new policies and renewals. So that is my fifth way to improve your insurance policy. Yeah. Um, does that underground policy work for renter's insurance as well? Or is it mainly on the property manager side? So it's, it's mainly on homes and condos or rental properties. Um, renter's insurance, you wouldn't be uh, responsible for it because you don't own the complex yeah. or the, the home. <laughs> so it should be on, if, if you're renting a home, it should be on their rental property <laughs> policy or an apartment, then they could endorse it on theirs. Okay. And pipes, you mean water and sewer? Correct. And under and, and then electrical. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, scheduling jewelry, antiques, high value items, wine collections, instruments, things like that. Um, so you have your personal property coverage, but there are limits with those high value items. So if you have items, I like to start with like three thousand dollars and higher. Um, some people do schedule, you know, $1,000 rings, $1,500 pendants, things like that, um, which you're more than welcome to, but I, I like a starting point of $3,000 um, or higher. Um, what this means by scheduling it is that you have a $0 deductible versus it being subject to your homeowner's deductible, and it's agreed value. So instead of having that max limit of, you know, some policies may have $3,000 max limit on jewelry or, um, you know, 1000 on guns, things like that. By scheduling those items, you get that agreed value. If your ring is $5,000, you're going to get $5,000 for your ring. You find out that value by your bill of sale or an appraisal. Okay, So again, if you have high value items, just look at what your policy actually includes or schedule it. Now I'm going to go into some discounts. Kids, they can be very expensive to insure on your policy. Um, young drivers, they're expensive. So ways to help lower that cost as much as you can. Um, good student discounts. If they have a be or better GPA, um, get on them because a lot of carriers offer that discount and um, it can be significant. Um, I've had some that $800 savings a year, that's huge. Um, if my daughter doesn't get a be or better, she's, she's paying for that difference, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> um, distance student discounts. So, a lot of carriers, if your child is 100 miles or more away from school without a vehicle, Obviously, they're not driving, but they're still a household resident. Um, you can get a discount for them being away. Some carriers are also going down to 25 miles away, you know, if they're more local, but they're still away, living on campus without a car. So just look at, at that as an option. Um, some carriers off, offer safety um, discounts for, this, for the course as well as on the policy, um, such as like a Road America course, um, a new driver can take a Road America uh, driving, I wouldn't say test, it's a course, um, but they can get a discount on their uh, policy as well. And then if you have like a Corvette or a Porsche or some fancy car, you're never gonna let your child drive, you know they will never drive it, you can put that on your policy if they do have an accident in that vehicle, so it lowers the cost. But if they do happen to take that vehicle, get into an accident, you just have a higher deductible than your other deductible. So it's another way to help cut costs on those high expensive vehicles. Very fuel is they all. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's a great example. Yes. It can happen. 
Um, a lot of carriers offer uh, discounts for your occupation, your education level. Um, some of those uh, military, veterans, if you're over 50, uh, doctors, dentists, teachers, things like that. So just talk to your agent on if your occupation or your level of education qualify for a discount. Well, many of them do, okay? Um, higher education, there's discounts for as well. So again, going into uh, my ninth, my ninth way to improve your um, insurance policy is construction costs are going up again, like everything. Um, insurance companies do see that, so you'll see inflation on your homeowners that you know your home was insured at two hundred fifty thousand, now it's at you know two hundred and seventy-five thousand. There's going to be an inflation cost to help keep up with the times. More and more having higher inflation costs. Um, I just talked to one of our insurance carriers that they had 20 total home losses last year. 19 of those homes that were total losses, not a single one of them, um, I, well, let me rephrase that. 19 of them were underinsured. So the, they're not inflating the costs as much as the construction and labor are going up. So. Look at your policy on if you have replacement cost, guaranteed replacement cost, or increased coverage. So to break that down, replacement cost, so if your home is insured at 250,000, 250,000 is the max they're gonna pay out. That's replacement cost. Some will have an increased endorsement, which means they'll give 25% above that or 50% above that. Guaranteed replacement cost, means no matter what the co house costs to rebuild, they're gonna rebuild it for you. If it's gonna cost you 400,000 to rebuild your $250,000 home, you're gonna get it, okay? So look at that as well, especially with these, um, these increases. You don't wanna be underinsured, okay? And then there is the difference between market value and replacement cost. You insure your home at, at replacement cost, not market value, okay? Market value, we don't care what you could sell your home for. We want to know what it's going to cost to rebuild it. Okay, that's what we're insuring it for. My tenth way to improve your insurance policy is your roof. So we get a lot of clients that um, will say, "Well, I have 30-year shingles." <laughs> that's great, but insurance companies don't care about that. <laughs> insurance companies generally, generally, again, every carrier is different. 15 to 20 years is the age, the time frame of what they look at for a good roof, okay? Um, again, it can vary, I'm just talking high level. So if it's within that age range, you'll have replacement cost on the roof, which means there's damage, it needs to be replaced, they will replace the roof. If it has actual cash value, also known as ACV, that um, will, mean that there's depreciation on the roof. So if it costs you know, $20,000 to replace your roof, but with depreciation, you may only get 12,000 to you know, repair or replace it. So look at your policy on what, what you have. Um, again, it varies from each policy, each carrier, okay? So those are my 10 top ways to improve your insurance policy. And because I like to be extra, I'm gonna give you an 11th. Yeah. And the 11th way to improve your insurance policy is to work with me. Uh, <laughs> my little plug. So um, we work with, I'm going to say 12 insurance companies. Really, we probably have about 30 insurance companies. But we work with 12 key carriers. Um, we have a lot of extras if you're, you know, specialty lines and things like that. But um, I do a review every year of your insurance policies. It doesn't mean I shop you every year. Um, we don't want to bounce you around. But... Review, do you have changes in your, your lifestyle? Do you have um, changes in the household? Did you do repairs on the home? Um, are there new coverages? I like to educate and make recommendations to best fit your needs, um, and there's changes constantly. So um, that's one of the perks, and we look for the best options. So rather than you shopping and trying to figure it out, out on your own and be like me, you know, eight plus years ago, not knowing anything about insurance, um, we find best fit for you to protect your assets. And then we do only work with A-rated um, companies. So um, we work with the best of the best and um, we're there to uh, guide you along the way with claims, questions, changes, and reviews. 
Any questions? Well, I just have one. Yeah. So you said um, getting the re review of your whoever's carrying you right now, mm -hmm. but when you move people around, so I've been with the same carrier for a long time, like since I was 16. Mm -hmm. That's a really long, long time. time. So, and you know, we've never had a problem with them. However, it seems that if uh, there's three claims, you suddenly lose your rating and it doesn't matter how long you've been there. Yeah. Didn't happen to me, it happened to someone I knew, but. Yeah, so generally when there's high home claims or even, or I shouldn't say high, um, number of claims, uh, you could be dropped or your rates will increase significant, significantly. Um, prior to me joining David, I was with a captive agent, agency um, and I had three claims. Those three claims consisted of, I was locked out of my car, that was a $75 um, charge. Um, someone uh, hit me in a parking lot and then the third, we were both backing out in a parking lot, minimal. I think thousand dollar on each one of those claims, and then the seventy five dollars. They more than doubled my rate, mm -hmm. and I was, I think like nineteen twenty at the time, and uh, I was like, it's more than my car payment. I can't <laughs> afford this. Like, and they said, well, because you've been with us since you were sixteen, we're keeping you, but your price is going up. Well, being you know nineteen twenty, I can't afford that. Um, so then I went shopping. So as an agent. When we see, help, one will help guide you through claims. I would have liked to know not to put in those minor claims because then I could have avoided that price. So we talk through the claim process with someone. Get an estimate first before you submit a claim. You know, maybe it's under your deductible or right around your deductible. Why submit a claim? Because then you have that against you. So having an agent help guide you rather than working on your own um, is also a benefit. And then again, with our review, we take a look. Well, you had a lot of claims. What can we do? Is there other options? And generally, there are, um, but we're just there to, to guide so you're not doing it blindly. That's three claims total? That, when, yeah. Ouch. Well, that was, you know, many years ago. <laughs> but yeah. It, I love that you're talking about um, getting the uh, just ensuring that you aren't underinsured. My sister was in the Colorado fires and lost her entire home um, and hadn't done a review. And so they were underinsured and are not getting, you know, what they had hoped. Um, and it's just, she goes, if I just would have known that I was supposed to meet, I would have met, but my agent didn't reach out. So if your agent doesn't reach out, I recommend Get reaching out to your agent. <coughs> yeah. 